Welcome back to our off-grid home build where Charles is making faces for those beautiful drawers that he built for the kitchen and bathroom. Can you tell us about how you made the seams disappear on these drawer fronts and got them so smooth? There's only one that I had to put a seam on. That's the big bottom one. I just glued two pieces of wood together and then I took it to a friend's house and ran it through a planer. Since I don't have my own planer, I used his. It made everything nice and flat. friend also has a joiner, so Charles used that after planing the boards to make the edges flat so they'd go together more easily. So I forgot to film, but I got the cabinet face on this vanity and I got the first drawer face on it. And that's what it's looking like so far. second face on. And there it is. I believe the bathroom is officially 100% complete now. Some of you may remember last winter we brought home this giant pile of tongue and groove lumber. At the time our intention was to use it for the wall paneling and we weren't sure what we would do with the rest of it. But since then Charles used it to make the pocket door for the bathroom and we also decided to go ahead and use it for the faces of the drawers and cabinets in both the kitchen and bathroom. So. We are going to have a lot of pine in the yurt, but we're good with that and it has saved us a lot of money and we're using every scrap of this lumber. The pile is very small now and we're hoping that it will hold out to complete not only the upper cabinets but also the wall paneling above that. I'm using my router to round off the edges with all the drawer fronts and doors. After using the bathroom vanity as a prototype, Charles got a bit of an assembly line going. So it wasn't long before he had 10 drawer faces ready to go under the kitchen countertop. Next up are the doors for the lower cabinets. The first cabinet door. After he glued them and cut them to size, Charles brought the cabinets back to our friend's shop where he used the drill press to make holes for the hinges.
Charles is inside the yurt screwing in the cement board. That is something that he'd been putting off and now he can put it off no longer because it's almost time to tile the floor. You saw him putting screws into the cement board many months ago, but it was just enough to hold it in place and not enough to make it permanently sturdy. Screwdriver bits. How many? 25 of them. Why would you need 25 screwdriver bits? Because I'm putting thousands of screws in my floor and I've already gone through four or five bits. Charles went through a dozen of those bits already, but now that we have enough screws in the kitchen floor, let's talk about the backsplash. Charles wants to be able to access the wires behind it, which means he doesn't want to do tile. And we considered the faux tile products at the big box store, but they're kind of absurdly expensive for a vinyl sticker. So we decided to go with the wood that we already have. And as you can see, <laughs> it's a lot of wood uh, and there's going to be the same wood above it when the cabinets are finished and then more above that when the walls above the cabinets are finished. So we have to do something to make the backsplash look a little bit different, break up the wood. And we've decided to experiment with a green stain. We might also decorate it a little bit further later, but for now we're going to try the green stain. And if we don't like it over the long term, we can always paint over it later. So what do you think? If you like the green stain, let us know in the comments below. If you have alternative ideas, let us know that too.